Hey, welcome to a new podcast episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my current projects and uh, some yarn acquisition. If this is something for you, maybe give this video a thumbs up. I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. That's something I haven't really done before in my other podcasts, but today I'm wearing my Fall Bluff sweater by Ashley Lillis. And you can see it's really, I'm use it's drops Alaska for the yarn and uh, you can see that it's peeling very like much. Um, but this is something I'm just wearing around the house. Uh, and obviously now when I'm filming, but it's really, really cold in the house at the moment. I think it's 12 degrees outside and 16 degrees inside. And um, I'm wearing this wool blanket also on my legs while I'm sitting here on a wool carpet. <laughs> so wearing wool socks. So everything is wool at the moment. Let's get started with the knitting. I don't have any finished objects today. To show i've been uh, casting on like crazy and i've been ca casting on uh, more than i have been finishing off projects so the the things i'm gonna show today are mainly current whips i have three whips that i'm not gonna mention or show today i can mention them briefly if you have seen any of my previous videos then you know that i started on a black ranunculus progress on that ranunculus is the same today i haven't worked on it i've on other things so that's kind of on hold a little bit we will see how if i'm working on it i do like the dark pattern on it and i might be able to layer it with something else um so we will see if i get on it but i have other projects that i'm more interested in at the moment which which are what the ones i'm gonna be talking about uh, i have two other whips uh, i have the green bambino thingy top uh, which is has more progress on than I had the last time but it's not much it's like this much uh in length so it's pretty much the same um and i'm i think i'm gonna be talking more about that when i have uh, more progress on it and uh, can actually show a little bit of the vision i have for it and uh the third current object that i just gonna briefly mention without showing it is the same jumper as I'm wearing now. I'm making one for my boyfriend in the exact same yarn but in a different color. Uh, so far I've done the neck, started on the neck ribbing. Uh, for his jumper I'm making a slightly closed neckline and uh, I'm gonna make it also a bit longer but folded so I get like a thicker, cozier neckline. Um, uh, but I haven't, I've done this much on it uh, for the neckline so it's not gonna be anything I'm gonna show right now. I'm sure I'll be showing it later in a, another video and it's pretty much this pattern and I'm wearing something similar now so it, there's not gonna be that much to talk about at the moment but uh, yeah I'm gonna use that project as a mindless knitting uh, project so that's gonna be something I have just in my hands working uh, when it's maybe a bit colder outside and I can just have it resting on my lap and uh, yeah just you know chill <laughs> and knit um, but yeah I uh, this time I'm trying to make this video a bit shorter my previous knit uh, podcasts have been around an hour long uh, so I'm gonna see if, if I can keep the video a bit shorter this time I'm gonna show you three projects today that I am working on at the moment. And the first one is a project I showed you in my previous uh, knitting podcast also, which are the cozy autumn socks. I have finished the one sock and started on uh, the second sock. So here's my current progress. I love these socks. I tried it on and it fits so well. Haven't blocked it, but uh, yeah, I'm using uh, Drops Fable for this project, and uh, they're like it's a it's a free pattern. Uh, the pattern 
consists of a lace chart of a 12 row repeat I think and I have done uh, four chart repeats on uh, the leg part and then you do the heel flap and the heel bits but while you continue on the chart on the top side of the foot uh, the bottom of the foot is plain uh, stockinette and uh, then you just continue the pattern repeat on the top. So in total I have 11 uh, chart repeats and uh, for me that works really well. I think I might want to do this pattern again but uh, have fifth chart repeat instead of four. I think I'll The queen herself. <laughs> yes, as I was saying, we have 11 repeats of the chart and I think a fifth repeat would be nice to have it a bit longer. As I mentioned in the, the previous video about the needles, that I didn't really like knitting on them, um, I'm still on the same opinion, but I don't really hate knitting on them as much. But in the beginning they were extremely grippy, so every time I was like trying to move, like if I I could push the yarn but I couldn't pull it back so it got like it kind of does it now still. Like it was made it so difficult to pick up the stitches. So I had a, a thought that maybe I can when I've done the first sock I can uh, oil them or something uh, in case that helps against the friction that they would slide a bit better. But as I went they kind of wore out so that made it easier to knit on them even though they're still very Flimsy. And I was almost like, almost, almost getting a good flow in knitting with these, but then this happened. One of the tips break broke. <laughs> that was a pain in the butt <laughs> again. Um, when I got, when I was doing the foot, the ankle, heel, leg part, <laughs> um, it was taking so long to finish and every time I got to the, to the last row, uh, where you're meant to you're meant to knit three uh, stitches together, that was really difficult to do because like you didn't have that much space or wiggle room, and where you had so much uh, strain on the needles, so that's where it broke. And when it broke, I dropped a stitch and uh, ruined the past four rows. So I had to try to figure out where the increases were, where the knit together were, and yeah, it was a, it was a nightmare, but uh, I managed to figure it out and I finished up the sock. But yeah, so I'm just trying to keep my hopes up. I'm uh, two and a half charge repeats uh, through this sock, and uh, then comes the heel part, and the heel part went really fast, and then the rest of the foot. I'm feeling optimistic, but it's still taking longer than anticipated with this sock but at least the result is really nice and uh, I'm looking forward to wear this. What I did here on the foot I experience usually that the way you decrease for the toes is like too much of a triangle tip for me. I like to have a more rounded toe so I did my increases a bit later and yeah I just stopped a bit earlier. I don't know if you can see here yeah, so it says that you are you stop this pattern before like where your toe ends, but if I do that it feels like the foot's gonna, the toe bit is gonna become like a triangle. So I did an extra channel repeat, so this bit ends uh, midway on my toes and then I started with the decrease and then uh, I tried it on and checked like when it covers my toes. And then I did the Kitchener stitch to to cast off. Yeah, so this is the size large and uh, yeah, it's called Cozy Autumn Sock by This Handmade Life. I'm gonna link all my projects uh, in the description box if you want to read more about them. I'm usually uh, writing um, notes in my computer but I tend to update into Ravelry so there might be some more information about the projects uh, in there also.
my next uh, project is uh, if you have watched my other videos you have seen me uh, block this project uh, the front of it it's um, the Fa Fabo sweater by Fiber Tails and it looks like this this is the front this is my progress on the back if you have seen my second uh, knitting podcast, you saw that I was using this yarn, which is Istex uh, Einband. This is a really um, rustic wool. When I bought it, or when I it arrived, because I ordered it online, it arrived and it felt like straw almost. It was so, so rustic and rough. Uh, but now when I've been knitting on it, and, and I'm matching it with drops... Uh, alpaca silk i don't have a skein of it at the moment here i will get to that later but uh, it's this fluffy 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 yarn and uh, this is the rustic one it's an icelandic wool and together they create like this type of yarn uh, they're not the exact same um, color but uh, I'm very fine with that since it's gi it's giving this beautiful look to it. It's like even more rustic looking when the, the white is mixed with that gray color. But yeah, let's see here. You can tell from here that it's very droopy looking at the front. Uh, this one was the exact same, if not more. But uh, I have blocked it now and it's very flat. It's very, very drapey for, I did not expect wool to feel like this drapey, but it's so nice feeling. Uh, it's fluffy and uh, it's a tiny bit sheer i really love this pattern uh the pattern itself in the beginning before i bought it i was in love <laughs> it was the most most beautiful pattern uh, that i have seen and i kind of fell in love with the back first before i was sold on the front the back side was kind of what felt a bit luxurious to me with this honeycomb brioche here and this is pearl pearl stitches or it's a stockinette stitch but the pearl side is on the front and then there's honeycomb brioche again but this section here you do knits in the front but uh, that you later then create these braid looking uh, things with so this will be there also on that side on the back side i really love this pattern it's extremely easy to follow when i looked at the pattern first i could not understand anything it's uh, a chart lace pattern but uh, everything is so easily described she describes them in in the text uh, just briefly but you're mainly meant to look at her description videos where she shows exactly how she does it and those videos are only available when you buy the pattern uh, the pattern uh, is a PDF pattern and in it you have links that direct you to YouTube which are hidden from anybody else who doesn't have the pattern. But she's, it's, those videos are specifically for the pattern and uh, she shows you exactly how you do each section. So if there's any confusions or anything just look at the videos and uh, you'll understand uh, how it's done. Something I did wrong in the start here was that I should have started uh, this one uh, a bit. I don't know if you can tell, but there's there's a bigger gap here than there is on that one and the rest. So that one, the gap here, is wider. It's like one extra row or something before the the cable um, twist you can't really tell it uh, unless you know about it and maybe not even then 
but it's not a biggie and uh, nobody knows it. The only issue I have with this pattern or this yarn, I like the yarn combination, but I don't know if I love the color. The color is a nice color, but I don't know if the color suits me. Um, so maybe it does, <laughs> I don't know. I, w I need to see when it's done, but uh, we will see. My sister's birthday is coming in uh, end of November and uh, I'm gonna see if she wants to have this when it's done. If she wants it, she'll then she'll have it. But um, I don't know if she can handle the the wool material. It's very fluffy, and uh, I know she has allergies towards cats and dogs and hay. So I don't know if she can handle this fabric. If she doesn't want it or she can't handle the yarn, then I will most likely try to dye this yarn. I love the fabric, the flowiness, and the material, but not so sure on the color. Um, but I'm still having so much fun knitting this pattern, and I will use some other type of yarn for that pattern again. But yeah, it's it's amazing, and uh, it's really fun that favu in Swedish uh, could mean uh, favorite. So when I saw the name, I was like, oh, my favorite sweater my favorite sweater <laughs> so yeah it's my favorite sweater at the moment so this is the progress of the front it's meant to be like a cropped jumper these ones are like the sleeves start a bit like uh, it doesn't start by your shoulder it starts like midway on your arm so this section is part of the uh, um, the sleeve but you also, I th I don't really know exactly how the sleeve starts. I'm I guess you just knit when this has a shoulder part. You knit them or you sew them together, and then you you get started with the with the sleeve over there. I kind of I kind of stopped knitting on this since uh, I ran out of yarn. That's why I didn't have a skein of the alpaca silk one, but uh, I picked up that parcel yesterday, so now I have uh, yarn again <laughs> for this project. This is the back side of, with the knitting side on the back part, and this is the front, which is gonna be, this is the back piece, but the front side of that back piece. That's the second, uh, project and then I have my third current whip but this is my last uh, work in progress and my latest obsession <laughs> which um, I have pretty much been binge knitting this uh, since the yarn arrived uh, and uh, I'm gonna talk about the yarn first this is the yarn I chose for this project and uh, this is actually uh, Drops newest yarn, Drops Daisy and it's made of 100% merino wool, untreated, no superwash um, well it's colored so I don't know what type of coloring method they have but because to me this is very very vibrant to be an on a non superwash type of merino wool, um, so I was a bit skeptic on how it would feel. I have felt merino wool before, but this is the first time I'm knitting merino wool in this um, size. I have used drops Sunday before, and to me that feels scratchier than this does. Uh, I haven't tried their double Sunday, so I don't know how that one feels. Um, but so far, I'm really liking this yarn. Um, if you see, it's like a spun, a twisted, uh, maybe a four ply? Can it be four ply? Yeah, I think it could be four ply, but it's a very, like, it looks thick, but it's also 
very like squishy so it's it's a very lovely feeling type of yarn this was on offer uh, where I got it from and the color range isn't really anything that's like oh wow it's, it looks like typical drops colors um, and now I have been knitting for a year uh, I think drops have good yarns um, I try to stay away from yarn that are treated with superwash or have unnatural, like they have man-made uh, materials in them like uh, nylon or polyamide, unless it's for socks, but like for sweater, sweaters and jumpers, I want to stay close to 100% natural materials. This was a really cheap merino wool that was untreated, which also, and this, especially this orange color, had a really nice vibrant color. And uh, the reason I got this yarn was because I needed to... I wanted to make a vest for me when I go outside and I want to go skiing this winter. Uh, long distance skiing and also running when it's colder outside. So I figured I could have... Like obviously you get to be pretty warm <laughs> when you're out running. But I don't want to catch a cold, so having something uh, on my body that's not like hugging my neck, uh, but also like gives me some airflow uh, would work well. And merino is known to be very well insulating during the winter, but also it lets the moisture out. Um, so I had a pattern in mind that I was gonna make. Um, I wanted to have like a v-neck type of uh, vest with pretty low, like open uh, armholes and uh, then I wanted a vibrant color since in the darkness you want to be like visible as much as you can so I got this orange color and when I got the yarn it had passed a few days since I decided on what pattern I wanted to make and by the time the yarn arrived I changed my mind <laughs> so <sighs> instead I am making my first petite knit pattern. I have kind of been a little bit, not, not avoidant, but I would try to, if I can, I would rather like buy patterns from people who like small business uh, pattern designers. I'm not saying petite knit is anything bad. I still like the style she makes and designs. Uh, petite knits uh, pieces of clothing are very, wardrobe friendly, good uh, like uh, base uh, staple pieces of uh, clothing to have in your wardrobe. And there are like a few pieces of clothing patterns from a petite knit I do want to do, but like it hasn't been my main choice when buying, uh, purchasing patterns. Um, I don't, like you don't knit that many patterns per year. So in that case, if I am gonna purchase patterns, I'd I would rather choose to invest in smaller pattern uh, knitting designers, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I had decided on to make a vest, and uh, when I got the yarn, I completely changed my mind because while I was looking at the gauge for this yarn and the gauge for the vest, I realized it's not the same gauge. So I looked what patterns there are on Ravelry with the gauge that this yarn has and one of Petit Knit's uh, patterns popped up and uh, I've decided to make the Terrasso Nick pattern and this is my progress so far. I'm pretty much almost done. I have a few more rows of the neck ribbing and then you bind off with an Italian bind off and then it's done. <laughs> I have uh, weaved in the ends already on this section. Uh, I have not weaved in the ends uh, for where I had to cast on for the neck ribbing and also where I had to change skein. Oh. This is really 
nice feeling and uh, yeah you can kind of see like <laughs> the results already um, so you could say it's like 99% finished and uh, it's like to me this is like I have made a similar type of garment before uh, it was made of uh, another type of wool uh, material but that has turned out to be also like a really used item for me in the winter time it's so easy to layer it so you can just wear this with a coat over and uh, yeah just continue on <laughs> with your day and it's a perfect transitional piece to wear uh, like you can wear this over like thinner uh, jumper uh, yeah thinner like cotton jumpers or uh, shirts or yeah anything uh, essentially there's like no limits on how you could style this but this is maybe not as op optimal for going running because like it's so close to the neck and I tend to get really warm under my hair but this is gonna be such a very useful item in my closet I, I own a Fjellraven Anorak jacket and it's a jacket that you it's a pullover jacket that has a zipper halfway in the front so I could wear this under it and it's gonna look like I wear an actual uh, jumper yeah I can decide to like if I if if it's not that cold outside but I feel like I want to protect my neck I can just wear this and uh, I'm gonna be fine with just that but if it's like really cold outside I can wear this jumper and then place this over and if I get too warm it's easy to just take off and uh, yeah I mean I could wear a scarf but for me it always feels like it's like falling off or it's always like in the way or so this is just a really easy simple piece of garment that doesn't take a lot of space it's easy to have in your bag or in my case I have like a kangaroo pocket <laughs> in my jacket so I can just put it there uh, yeah so it's like perfect uh, piece of garment <laughs> in the winter and fall so uh, if you haven't tried any of this type of pattern before and you are in the in the thoughts of making something like this then I would highly recommend to do that if you just want to uh, make something real quick you don't have to make the piece this long it's enough to have it to go like here uh, so it's long enough to not show behind other like jumpers if you have like this is pretty like wide opening so uh, figure out what you're like usually wearing and see like how much you would need then like make just enough for it to be able to go underneath it and uh, that's it <laughs> highly recommend this pattern it's really easy to follow there's tutorials on every step also on this in Petit Nits website and uh, yeah go for it if you are thinking about it and uh, yeah I'm loving it so far and uh, I'm using uh, I think this is my fourth skein so far yeah I bought five skeins of this uh, yarn and this is my fourth so I could have gotten off with just three if I made it shorter but I wanted to follow the pattern almost to the point that the pattern states I made it just like one centimeter shorter because I'm not that tall and uh, I don't want uh, it to go all the way through on my back I want it to like end somewhere midway um, and so it does <laughs> okay so I'm kind of running out on the light let's see hope that works better but yeah the sun is setting uh, and it's uh, 3rd of October and it's almost 6 o'clock uh, on the evening so the sun is setting and winter is coming <laughs> uh, and I have some knitting to do but yes those were all my whips and uh, now I'm gonna talk about some exciting yarns that I just purchased in uh, August. No wait, okay let's see, it was the end of June I think. 
until like end of July, there was a knit along going on uh, that a unit was hosting. It was called the Cathedral Knit Along, where you could choose to uh, sign up uh, on their website to be able to win uh, a few prizes. And uh, I was lucky. I could have never believed that I was actually one of the lucky winners. There was, I think, the, the first, there was uh, one or, uh, let's, yeah, there, I think there was one winner that won 200 Canadian dollars worth of gift card, three winners that could win 100 Canadian dollar gift cards, and then three winners who would win the book, uh, Making Memories. Uh, and uh, I was one of the people that won the 100 Canadian dollar gift card. And um, I live in Sweden. <laughs> um, I was never expecting to win. I just I just signed up for fun. Uh, this was also my first knit along. Uh, first time knitting lace and first time using DPNs. And uh, I was very... This was almost the time where I had started to... I decided to start showing my knitting journey more on Instagram. I like... Uh, I That's when I, when I started to like post more about my progress and um, I had just started to make... I think that's also the same time I started, I made my first knitting podcast and uh, I wasn't really thinking I, I could win this and um, I have really not really won anything <laughs> in my life. So one day I just, I got contacted on Ravelry and then I con was contacted on Instagram also and was, she was like, hey, you're one of the <laughs> winners of this knit along. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> like I did not know what to say and uh, then I got worried about because I hadn't really checked up on uh, like the toll and everything so I was like I don't know if I'm in the position where I can like buy any new yarns so if I'm gonna like use this gift card I'm I need to make sure that the yarn I buy is gonna be of yarn that is hard or almost impossible to buy in Sweden. Uh, so I did a lot of research before I actually placed an order and uh, I looked around and I looked the assortment they had online and then I decided on what yarns to make and then I changed my mind and then I... Uh, yeah. It went to that point uh, where I was contacted again <laughs> by UNIT to see if I actually received the gift card because I hadn't, they hadn't seen it that like I used it. <laughs> so uh, they just wanted to make sure that I actually received it. But but I, I managed to find um, a yarn by the Fiber Company. And I know this yarn is available in Europe and I think it's an English, I think it's an English company. I've seen, uh, after I made the purchase, I've seen the fiber company available in Sweden, but I haven't seen the Zero, I think it's called Zero, or Kiro Zero, this uh, brand. I haven't seen that yarn in Sweden anywhere. So I decided to go for Celestial color, uh, the colorway called Celestial. Uh, and I got uh, five skeins <laughs> of this color. So pretty. Uh, this is a... In the description it says This yarn is crafted using a blend of Surrey alpaca and merino wool that is wrapped around an organic cotton binder to create a beautifully soft brushed halo. And then it says uh, fiber content is 40% alpaca, 40% cotton, and 20% wool. And this is a sport weight, 50 grams, and uh, length 225 meters. And I was interested because the story seemed like a perfect uh, yarn to try on. Uh, I wanted to like the yarn to feel a bit special, and I think the story makes this yarn feel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't really seen this yarn in anywhere in Sweden before. 
according to Ravelry, it's not available anywhere in Sweden. Um, I might have looked at, looked at it wrong, but yeah, this is one of the yarns I got. So I got five skeins of this. Um, according to Ravelry, you can knit uh, a woman's size small jumper with using just four skeins. So I got a fifth one just to be sure that I have enough because I'm planning on making a jumper or a cardigan. I haven't decided exactly on which one. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, you can share them in the comments to me or write to me on Instagram. But yeah, these are the five beautiful skeins that I got from Unit Toronto. Okay, I got also other yarns from, uh, uh, let's see, also from Fiber Company, and it's this wool. So this is 100% Kent lambs wool, sourced and produced in England. This is 100 grams, and I'm planning on making a hat with this yarn. Um, I've worn, I haven't knitted a hat in wool or any, any hat. Um, or I did knit a hat that I don't consider it's a success. Um, it's not my color. I just used one skein and it's too small. It doesn't look great, so I don't consider that. I'm, I just forgot about it. I, I ignored that I made it. So I'm gonna knit my first hat in this yarn. 100% lamb's wool. I've used hats in wool before and I tend to get an allergic reaction on my forehead. I'm hoping that I don't get it with this yarn. Um, and if I do, I'm just gonna keep wearing it because this yarn looks lovely. <laughs> it's a brown... Oh yeah, I forgot to say that this celestial color. It's a warm brown color with like a hint of brick. Um, I would say it's if you look closely you can almost see strains of like darker brown but the halo is like a warmer or a brighter brown color so I, I'm interested to see what this looks like when it's up knit um, and uh, if you if we go back to this one again you can see it has some uh, variation to it also I thought it was interesting that it's made of lamb's wool. I'm imagining that's gonna be a bit softer. It's still a very rustic uh, feeling yarn, uh, but it doesn't feel that scratchy to me. Uh, like this is scratchy, but I'm not, you know, um, that picky on it. Uh, except when it comes to, like, for some reason my head gets rashes. <laughs> so I hope this is gonna be fine. I'm uh, thinking of making this pattern here. With this, with the fiber lore, I didn't say it out loud, I just showed you, but it's the uh, fiber company lore and this hat. I hope I have enough yarn <laughs> for that. And then I have two more yarns that I ordered, and uh, I was gonna make a hat with, okay, I'm gonna show them. I have it's. I'm just gonna show them first and then talk about them. So it's BC Garn, Semilla Melange, and BC Garn Lock Lomond. I don't know how well you can tell, but this is a dark brown shade. And this online, this one looked orange online. The color is called copper, and uh, to me copper is like a dark orangey red color, but this is, maybe it is, but it, yeah, it's so hard to tell. I'm gonna film you, film this color to you later and show what it looks like online. But I was visioning like a cute, tweedy type of, because uh, this has some tweedy bits to it. I was envisioning like a cute orange tweedy hat for autumn. And when it arrived, I wasn't, like, I wouldn't say disappointed, because <laughs> I can still make it work, but it wasn't what I envisioned. This is 50 grams and 150 meters. So when I looked at patterns that people have uh, used with this yarn, 
almost all of the hats uh, that people use with this, they need more than one skein. It's either like two skeins or just just slightly over one skein. Um, I could combine it with another yarn, but I was envisioning a one colored tweed hat. And now when I have been knitting around in the house, I start to get really cold in my hands. Um, so I'm thinking of making fingerless mittens with this yarn instead and have them around in the house um, when I'm knitting. I have previously thought, like, I haven't really understood the point of fingerless mittens because I always <laughs> am cold as at the fingertips. But I think if you have mittens on when knitting, it might be difficult. So having them indoors in the house could be functional. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna make with that skein. And then we have the dark brown semi melange one. This is uh, also just one skein. This is 50 grams. Uh, yeah, 50 grams, but 175 meters. So I have actually found this in Sweden. Uh, so I ordered another skein. Maybe I'll make a hat with this or gloves. Um, not gloves, um, mittens. But we will see. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna make with this one just yet. But uh, something nice, I hope. <laughs> something beautiful okay so these were the this is my unit toronto order <laughs> right here and uh, this is uh, oh i'm so so happy with the purchase uh, unit is amazing they're so friendly and so helpful and so if you live in canada i highly recommend them they're so lovely <laughs> um, they have a nice website and nice selection of yarns um so yeah check it out if you can and if you want and need yarn <laughs> okay and then i have ordered uh, four sock yarns from a swedish company they are hand dyed and uh, the way i found this was through an instagram advertisement the advertisement stated that the company is actually um, discontinuing. The woman who owns it doesn't have the time to keep uh, the business running so she's cancelling her brand and uh, selling out her assortment that she has currently with 20% discount. And uh, I checked in on their website and I decided to buy, let's see here, the materials. So the company it's called Garnbolaget, which means the yarn company. And I bought trekking, which is made of 75% wool and 25% polyester. I chose to buy four skeins. They're all 100 grams each, 420 meters long. So it's a very like thin, uh, I guess it would be, it would be like a finger in weight yarn. And uh, the colors are so amazing. I have already showed these ones on Instagram. I ordered four yarns and then I got a text uh, from the owner saying that one of the yarns that I chose was actually sold out. So she wanted to see what I wanted to do. Okay, I have to fix this lighting situation. One sec. Okay, I hope you can see. Um, I'm really exaggerating the light on my camera now because I want you to be able to see this yarn. I might look really pale, but here is the yarn. Oh, look at these! Aren't they just gorgeous? These are all hand-dyed yarns. They're so lovely. Uh, I first, when I went on the website, this is the yarn that I fell in love immediately with. This is like, oh, look at this. There's like brown, shades of yellow and pink and purple and peach and, oh. I, I just want to eat this. <laughs> this looks like candy to me, but also like, this bit here 
it's like chocolate ice cream with like banana ice cream, chocolate ice cream and strawberry ice cream. It's this remind like this color com color combination here reminds me of a chocolate banana ice cream uh, from like a box <laughs> we have here in Sweden. So and then I saw these pink shades and it's like everything just I get a really nice fall vibe <laughs> from this uh, skin. Uh, so this was the one that flew straight into my shopping basket <laughs> on her website. Yeah, this is 100% sorry, 100 grams of uh, yarn. So I hope it's gonna be enough to make like it's gonna be enough to make at least one pair of socks, and then I might use the rest to like blend it in with other socks. Um, because they these are all 100 grams of yarn, and I could maybe make an extra pair of sock from. The leftover yarns here. Yeah, then we have uh, this one. It's uh, It looks very shiny pink in the camera, but I would describe this as... Like this shade is a uh, brick red color, a bit brown reddish, and this is... This is like a pink color with some peach to it. It's like orange, orangey pink, I'd say. And this is the same as this color, but a bit brighter. And then we have like burgundy red here, and then really vibrant red uh, slash orange, purple and lighter pink. <laughs> so this is also like a oh, wonderful yarn. I have to show you in a different lighting, but so, so nice. And then this is also a third, the third one that I chose from the start. This is like a fiery orange, uh, so everything from like really white yellow color up until like a pink reddish color. So it has so many nice colors of shade and I hope this is gonna be like a stripey sock. And I'm imagining like making the sock with this color but having the heel with this color or potentially even this, I don't know. But yeah, this is also so amazing and uh, it feels good to be able to support uh, a hand dyer. It's sad to see that she's um, cancelling her business, but she's doing it because of lack of time and I understand that fully. So yeah, it's I'm just glad that I had to had the chance to be able to to get these yarns. I have a feeling these are going to be very dear to me. I'm going to cherish them and respect the yarns um, as they deserve. So the yarn that I didn't choose uh, in the first go, but that I ended up with getting is mainly because it's a one colored yarn, but in a different saturation. So it was this color. This is like a cool pink color. It might look purple uh, in some areas. It has some speckled color there, which I think adds into the integrity of this yarn. And like you can experience bleeding with these yarns, but she suggests to soak them in water that's mixed with etica, which I believe is white vinegar. Yeah, that's gonna keep the color to stay a bit longer. But uh, yeah, this is like a beautiful, like, I don't, I'm, I'm bad at describing the shades of color. I hope I can manage to catch the actual colors of these yarns in a really good lighting instead. But yeah, they're so gorgeous and uh, oh, I'm gonna be... I'm so excited to see what I can make with these. But they will become socks, that's for sure. Something. Something magical will happen with these. <laughs> I have a feeling this video is gonna be long again. I've been recording now for an hour and a half and I don't think there's much where I can shorten this video down with. So yet again, <laughs> another long video. Um, hope you don't get bored of that or that you think it's too like, difficult to watch. But uh, the point is that, yeah, I mean, if you like to watch them, you watch them. Um, but why I'm making these type of videos is mainly because I like this type of video type. <laughs> I like this type of video content when I'm knitting. 
Uh, I love having somebody else's video podcasts uh, on um, next to me. <laughs> um, and it just feels like you're hanging out with somebody while you're knitting. So yeah, maybe that can I can uh, repay back that to the knitting community, show my knittings and uh, be a company for you when you're knitting. But if you don't knit but you just like to see what I'm crafting, that's also obviously okay. <laughs> and uh, maybe you have, you just want inspiration for your own knitting or you just want to look at yarn and beautiful colors, then yeah, uh, you take out what you want from this video. I'm not forcing, <laughs> forcing anybody to watch this. I just post them because it's fun um, and to keep up and uh, have like a little Look, looking back into what I have been needing in my journey. So yeah, I I have the intention to share what I learn and maybe I, that can help somebody else also. Because um, I've learned so much of watching other people's knittings and that also gives me inspiration to um, to try new things and not to be to not to be too scared of, you know, going outside of, you know, the knitting pattern and tweak with them myself and, uh, yeah, just be creative. So hopefully I can um, continue to spread that further to, yeah, anybody who's watching. <laughs> if you don't knit but you feel like you're stuck elsewhere with things, just take things with a grain of salt. Don't take things too seriously and just do more of things you that gives you joy. That's what I'm trying to do and uh, that's what I think um, we all should do. Uh, just things that gives us meaning in life and uh, joy. <laughs> so if you enjoyed watching this uh, video podcast uh, I would really be happy if you would want to leave a little comment and just let me know if you, wa you watch this video and uh, if this was any meaningful to you and um, yeah if you think this content is something you would want to watch more of then you're very welcome to subscribe and, uh, and giving a like to this video will also show YouTube that my content is relevant and interesting and fun to watch so uh, yeah giving me a like to this video. I will show YouTube that my videos are relevant and they will most likely also be shown to more people. I would be really grateful if you if you like the video and that you don't forget to, to like it because I know a lot of people forget to like uh, videos even though they watch them and they enjoy them but uh, they don't really interact with the video so it's nice to like watch the videos and stay watching for a longer time but interacting with the video also helps extra so yes thank you so much for watching and uh, I am gonna be back soon with some other type of videos I have great plans and uh, more knitting is to come more house life things I have uploaded a garden tour if you want to watch that you can watch it here if you want to watch my other projects, you can do that here. So yeah, go watch that if you want. And if you, if you don't, I wish you a very nice day. And uh, hopefully we meet again. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye.